So we have the opening act, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, introducing this variety show that's going to happen. And we have Billy Shears singing, who's Ringo. So anyway, with a little help from my friends, by the way, sorry, Fred, uh, they did actually do face-to-face -face work on this, believe it or not, in this odd little dorky song that Ringo sings, you know. I never thought much of this song. It just seemed to me like a throw-off piece, but whatever. Any case, uh, somebody recounts from that documentary talking about how Lennon and McCartney were literally facing each other with guitars, writing the song, and they were looking for lyrics, and McCartney goes, um, what do you see when you turn out the light? And Lennon goes, I can't tell you, but I know it's mine. That's great. Let's do that. Uh -huh. you know? So they, they work back and forth, lyrically. I don't know if musically they did. Uh, this song is like... Um, straight Ionian major key song in the Ionian mode which is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, the standard major scale. Okay. Goes from one to five to two minor, stays on two minor, back to five. So you hear forward and reverse. Fast forward, reverses. And then we have a Mixolydian progression for the chorus. I have, uh, little subtle thing there. It goes D A E D A E, and you think you go try with a little help from my friends a third time, but it just stays on the A chord. So it's. comes along. Beautiful harmonies on Lennon McCartney's part. Their, their call and response harmonies are really lovely. We, we're going to the relative minor, C sharp minor, to the two dominant seven acting in a classical fa fashion. Except it doesn't go goes which is kind of an odd movement and again one of those inexplicable secondary dominant moves I don't know why it works ah. um, but we have C sharp minor F sharp 7 okay. E D and A back to our mixolydian thing C sharp minor F sharp 7 repeat the same thing last verse is two part harmony Cute little tune. Yeah. Um, get. Uh, in the ending, we're going to flow into Lucy, so it's like. That's how the song began, by the way. as a five chord taking us to the key of A. And now we're in Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Ah, okay. So see these tricks they have. A buddy of mine we were talking about like a, I'm so glad that the guitar player in my jam band, uh, Gene, he is going through a Beatles phase like I am. And in fact he's working up all these like uh, solo guitar pieces of Beatles songs, you know. Where you can kind of wreck it, you can kind of go, boy, that sounds familiar. I mean, you go, oh, that's the Beatles. Oh, yeah, no, immediately. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Beatles, unmistakable. But, um, yeah, his arrangements are really nice, you know. Uh, but he's going through this phase, too, and he was talking about how, I think it was him saying this, that when he was going to music school, there was a composition teacher that did a section, just like I was talking about, on music theory and the Beatles. And one thing he said was, if you want to understand great modulation and how to modulate, study the Beatles, because really they are a course in modulation. Huh. Now, what is modulation? Moving from the key of C to the key of A, suddenly, all right? Uh, 
And we have, you know, we have that all over the map with the Beatles, and especially now they're going crazy. Like, they're really getting very experimental. And by the way, I, th I might have said this in the last video, but again, the thing that really pisses me off about what the critics said about Pepper is it's like, oh, it's so, all the baubles, bangles, and beads, you know, highly produced, but oh, there's not much substance in the songs. What? Hmm. There's not much substance in the songs? That Sgt. Pepper's, that little humble one-minute intro was an amazing work of modulation, combining blues and European music theory with dominant seventh chords, unbelievable. Huh. This is one little gem. Two and minute? This thing gets tossed off to the side like it's not an important piece of music. It actually is. It's huh. great. Huh. Uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, an amazing piece of music. Uh, the, the lick, we have a lick. <laughs> Any other songwriter would have just kept repeating that lick. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this is cool. Let's just write a song out of this. Picture yourself in a boat on a river with tangerine trees and marmalade sky. Somebody calls you, you answer quite slowly. The girl with kaleidoscope eyes. Gotta, you know, like some, uh, like a lazy composer would have just kept going with that because I found my cool lick. Let's right. exploit the hell out of it. Right. But let him know. Uh, what he does is at the tag of each one of the licks, he, he throws in a chord, a surprise chord. All right, now, first of all, the lick is based on a <coughs> one, uh, we've talked about this before, it's a progression called the one dominant, uh, one major, one dominant seven, four, four minor. Okay. In the key of A, that would be A, A7, D, and D minor. And one reason this is used again is because of the internal line. Right? So that's what this lick is implying. Instead of continuing, he goes, and again, just like Billy Shields, we have that same kind of progression, F to G to A. Now, any other lazy songwriter would have said, all right, that's cool, let's do it again. No. What Lennon comes around with is a totally different chord the next time, bringing us into like a bizarre spectrum of chord movement, all based on a monotone note. Uh, a pedal point. Brilliant. It's just amazing. So we have uh, for, uh, the verse. Going to an F. F. Back to the lick. I go on. Guitar's out of tune. But now that's an F sharp minor that comes in. Before it was an F. Now we're up a half step. What a surprise. Uh, uh, let's look at the melody on picture yourself in a boat on a river with tanner and trees and marmalade sky, sky. There's an A note. That A is inside an F chord. And it's also an F sharp minor. Right? So we, again, he's playing with our ears. Our ears were expecting the F again, but he hits F sharp, which is a, a, like miles away from the F, even though they're next door neighbors. Right. They're half step away. Half steps actually suggest great distance in okay. keys. Okay. All right. Right. If you, if you jump in fifths, then the keys are close to each other. Like uh -huh. from C to G, there's one different note between the key of C and the key okay. of G. All right. But when you look at F and F sharp minor as keys, F is one flat. And F sharp minor comes from a key that has uh, three sharps. So, like, looking down the circle of fifths, they're, they're far away. They're not next door, you know. Okay. So, uh, so we have the second part. Uh, Somebody calls you, you answer quite slowly. The girl with kaleidoscope eyes. F sharp minor. Now, wandering minor chords, which I said is a no-no. Yeah. D minor hails in a change. We have a moving line. 
Now the D minor could have come back home to A. But instead, he uses the D minor as a pivotal chord to bring us into a number of keys that are about to happen within one short section. All right? Man. All right, so uh, once more. melody note, D major, not D major, D natural, against a B flat, now that's a C chord, it's called C add 9, he's throwing that D, D note into a C major chord, okay, so you could, you could just as easily play a C and get away with it, because you're singing the melody anyway, so mm -hmm. it's like, uh, da, 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 he takes us to an F and leads the D in there, which gives us an F6. Right? Uh, go back to our B flat. So it's a B flat, C, F. Now that motion, because there's so much complexity in all that movement, we're starting to lose our sense of key. It is very psychedelic here, because we're, where are we? Yeah. There's, there's a disorientation, you know. What have we covered so far? I mean, how many, like, I guess, keys or roots or whatever have we... That's a good question. Um, Kind of an F at this point. Okay. Okay. If we think of it as F, we have our four chord, our five chord, right? Four, five, one. Right? So we have B flat, four, C with the added D. It doesn't change the meaning of the chord though. F. Back to our four chord B flat. Now we go to our C. Now here's where the all of a sudden that G, which is acts as a secondary dominant in the key of F to the uh, the five chord of F, which is C. But instead of, of doing that, instead of uh, G resolving to C, G G acts as a four chord in the key of D. I'm losing you here. There's yeah. so much going on. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to sit down with with pencil and paper. Yeah. Uh, a key of F has F is 1, B flat is 4, C is 5, okay? When we have uh, our G come in, it's not in the key of F, but it could be a secondary dominant, going back to the 5 chord, which is C. Okay. All right? Um, yeah. Got the thread? Yeah. All right, but instead, G is also the 4 chord of the key of D. All right? Okay. D, E, F, G, 1, 2, 3, 4, all right? right. So he just takes us to D, and you think we're in D, but we're actually in G because D is now acting as the five chord of five. The, the, the G chord. Right, right. And we have a one, four, five for the chorus. Just in the key of G, again, the whole step modulation, figuring into so many of the songs, we're in A for the verse and G for the chorus. Yeah. Right? With this, this bizarre, like, potpourri of chord <laughs> movement that takes us between the two different uh, sections. You knew these songs before, but in particular with, uh, it sounds to me like Peppers and Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds have kind of uh, slapped you upside the head uh, when you've really sat down and looked at them. Yeah. That uh, strawberry feels like, what? You know? Yeah. Oh, man. See, again, Steve, I have a really good ear, and I can, I can hear chords that are within the chord family template of a key. 
when these modulations start happening, I have to work my brain a little bit and kind of sing internally, do re mi, okay, oh, that's going to the three, but it's major, okay, I hear that. Uh -huh. So the way I used to quote no Beatles songs is just in my head. Uh -huh. uh, I had the ability, I probably had this ability even as a kid not realizing it, but I had the ability to hear chords very clearly in pop music. As soon as I started playing the guitar, I hit a D chord. If I hear a song on the radio that has a D chord, I could tell it's a D by the colorization of the chord oh, that the okay. guitar gives that chord. Yeah. On a piano, I wouldn't be able to tell it's a D. But because of the string combinations, I can hear it's yeah. a D chord. So I, I put together Beatles songs in my head, which is great because I, have the I had the general rough sketch of the songs, but when I go inside of them, yeah. it's like, wait a second, this is here? Oh my God, that's there? I have no <laughs> idea. Like Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. All my life I thought it started on a G chord. I knew it was in G. I knew the song was in G. I have no idea it started on an A oh, chord. Oh, man. It's like, my God. Well, so, now, tell me something. I've gotten a little confused here. When we're talking about modulations and when we're talking about mixing modes. Yeah. A, is mixing there, modes is modulation. Is modulation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's modulating, but you're not changing the root. When you mix modes, very often what's going on is, is the root. If you're in G, you could be doing G Ionian and then go to G Mixolydian, which is very common. They do that okay. a lot. Or uh, the minor keys are especially insane, what you could do with them as far as mixing modes. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to get the terminology uh, when you're talking that modulations and mixing modes. Almost always, this is they are the same thing. No, no. Uh, mixing modes. Well, maybe, maybe in a sense, mixing modes. The general convention is that you keep the root. Okay. So I might move from G major to G minor. That's mixing modes. I could play G Ionian to G okay. Aeolian, right? right? Modulation. You could change the root. Go completely out, out completely outside the key. You know, like okay. really change the root. And when I mean outside the key. You know, a bunch of subtle points here. I've been, I've been ranting about the major minor right. key system forever and how annoying it is that the, the musical academia just accepts this as being, you know, correct. And it's incorrect. It's wrong. The yeah. major minor key system is wrong. And they should get rid of it. <laughs> the harmonic, what they created the minor keys, melodic and harmonic minor modes, okay? They were ar an artifice. You had to change the natural structure of the scale that nature gave us, change one of the steps, and in the melodic minor, two of the steps. These, I look at them as there are seven modes, and these two, harmonic and melodic minor, are actually offshoots of the Aeolian mode. So they're modes of the Aeolian mode. Oh, okay. I call them submodes. The submodes, right? Right. Um, That'd be a good band name. <laughs> <laughs> the subdudes. The subdudes. That's, that's a great name right there. Everybody gets it wrong. They, they go subdudes. <laughs> All right. So we got Lucy in the sky. Uh, one other thing is that critics talk about is, oh, and I think I mentioned this in the last vid, but I'll say it again, is that um, Lennon supposedly was so pacified by psychedelics that he just accepted McCartney's super pop chorus, Lucy in the sky, you know, it's all McCartney all the way, mm -hmm. and, but uh, Lennon would never have accepted it had he not been pacified by psychedelics. I disagree. I could disagree totally. Hmm. I think Lennon heard it, he dug it, and said, let's do this, it's cool. And the reason why I say that is because Lennon, there were a few pieces he thought were his masterworks, and they were all around this period. Huh. Strawberry Fields, uh, uh, Lucy in the Sky, and uh, Day in the Life. Day in the Life. And some other stuff, too. Just around this period, he thought he composed some of his best stuff. All right? Uh, and he, again, we talked about how he reproduced it with Elton John, which was the world's biggest mistake in music. Uh, but he always felt like it was never given the proper, you know, uh, treatment that he wanted to give it. And he wouldn't have said that if he didn't think the chorus was good. Yeah. He wouldn't have felt that the song was good if the chorus wasn't good. So, no. Uh, yeah, it's McCartney's idea, but he accepted it and he liked it. 